Hello everyone, welcome to this video. I'm Flying Scotsman here. Now, a wee bit back you may remember that um, we took a Pentium 75 virtual machine with um, some RAM in it and upgraded it from Windows 3.1 to Windows 95 and that the installation of 3.1 had not been the most stable but the way it upgrade to 95 did actually go quite well. Um, well, today, what we're going to do is the opposite. We're actually going to go and uninstall Windows 95, because if you remember last time, I did actually save the system files. So, we're going to find out what happens if I downgrade to Windows 3.1. Now, it should be able to just leave everything, put everything back to how it was, right? Not really that simple. You see, while I upgraded everything in this to Windows 95, I did make some upgrades to some of the drivers and applications. So um, network driver, sound driver, display driver, all new Windows 95 ones. Um, the uh, Sound Blaster 16, yeah, obviously all this is now kind of new. And Adobe Acrobat was updated to the 32-bit version because the 16-bit version would not run on Windows 95. So we've um, we've got quite a lot to lose here. Um, so without further ado, let's um, let's see if we can go back to Windows 3.1. So to do that, because we saved the system files, we uninstall Windows 95 like we would any other program. Go to Add Remove Programs, and there's Windows 95 in the list. Add Remove, uninstall, removes Windows 95 from your computer and restores your previous version of MS-DOS and Windows. If you uninstall Windows 95, any programs you installed while running Windows 95 will, ha will have to be reinstalled. You may also have to reconfigure your swap file. Warning, do not uninstall Windows 95 if you compress your hard disks after setting up Windows 95. Are you sure you want to uninstall Windows 95? Why, yes. Before Windows 95 is removed from your computer, your disks will be checked for errors and all long, long file name created by Windows 95 will be removed. Well, that makes perfect sense. Uninstall is now ready to proceed. Windows 95 will shut down and uninstall will continue automatically. You know, in a way, this really is quite sad. Please wait while an install restores your previous configuration. This may take several minutes. Now it's just going to check all the files. See, as much as I hate in-place upgrades from one version of Windows to another, I hate uninstalled, in-place uninstalls even more. Oh, here we go. Windows 95... Uninstall now restart your computer if your computer does not restart properly turn it off and on again Remove any disks from your floppy drive disk drives and press enter Your computer will restart whoops Okay, well, it's gone back to MS-DOS. Plug and play thing is back. Microsoft mouse not found. Well, that seems to have uh, worked. that. Alright. Well, apart from the mouse not being found, what I can do is I can switch off the VM and reboot it. Oh, bloody hell. Now we are back in business. So let's um, let's have a look at some of the applications. 
Wow, looks like it's... Um... <laughs> so despite my having upgraded various things, it's, um... it's actually taken it straight back to um, how it used to be. So we've got that. There we go. Um, let's see what else did we have? Oh yeah, Creative Labs stuff. Audio software. That seems to work. SB config. Yep, that seems to work. This all obviously looks very impressive and, you know, it all seems to work, but um, I have to wonder. <laughs> what kind of horrible files have been left behind? Well... Let's let's go take a look. <laughs> Windows. Oh, got desktop dot w ninety five. Whoops. Well, QuickTime32 is still on here, but, um, let's see, will it at least let me remove Well, looks like that is forever on here. I mean, it doesn't seem like a problem, and it really isn't. But, I mean, if you'd been using Windows 95 for quite some time, and you'd installed quite a lot of applications, it might have been quite... You might have had quite a job on getting rid of them. Either you removed them uh, before you uninstall, or yeah, you just <laughs> have to live with them. Again, this has gone a lot better than I would have expected, but I mean, this really is kind of a brand new install, and um, it's not the way I would go about things. But I think um, the problem that we've had with the 32-bit version of QuickTime shows us why you can't, if you upgrade from one feature upgrade version of Windows 10 to another, so if you went from 1909 to 2004, it shows why if you've had that install on your system for longer than a month, Microsoft bars you from removing it because complications might arise. But there we go. I mean, I know this has been quite a short video, but I just wanted to show you what happens if you remove a previous version of Windows. And actually, this is a lot cleaner than I was expecting. I remember for a school project, actually, I had to, um, as part of it, I had to install um, a Windows 95 upgrade, uh, sorry, a Windows 98 upgrade to a machine that previously had 95 on it, and then I had to um, uninstall that upgrade after a wee bit, 
and um, yeah, there was there was bits and bo- bobs left on there, like the Outlook Express icon was left on the desktop. Um, again, not a big thing, but I mean, if that's if that was left, what else was? Um, I mean, my advice is, you know, I mean, in place upgrades nowadays, if especially if you're going for Windows Ten features, you know, nineteen oh nine to twenty oh four, for example. You know, in place upgrade will mostly work. I mean, there are cases where that doesn't work, but for the most part, it it does. Um, if you're working with older systems, though, I would always say clean install every time. And if you're wanting to downgrade, um, again, clean remove every time. So that's um, that is that. So. I think here I will end this video. Uh, So thank you all for watching, and please join me for my next one. Cheerio, bye.